Now we're in the esophagus. I'm gonna give you the basics of the esophagus. Then we're gonna go back and look at swallowing, which is getting the food down that esophagus into and then down. So first the anatomy of the esophagus. Well, this is it. So this tube here is the esophagus. Below that, there's the stomach. That's where we're trying to go. The role of the esophagus is just propulsion. We're trying to get food from the oral cavity into the stomach. That's the goal. This here is the trachea. And there's two other important um, components in this picture. We've got two sphincters. One is a name that makes sense. Upper esophageal sphincter. A sphincter, remember, is a muscular valve that can open and close. And so when it contracts, it's going to close. Um, when it relaxes, it opens. We can control things going in and out. We have lots of sphincters in the digestive system. This sphincter down here is in between the esophagus and the stomach. It has a name that also makes sense. It's called the lower esophageal sphincter, also can be called the cardiac sphincter. So these two sphincters are gonna help us control um, food passage. We are gonna have, this a muscular tube. Remember, we've already talked about how most of the alimentary canal is a muscular tube. We're gonna have the upper two thirds of the esophagus, and we'll look at the histology in just a moment, um, be both smooth and skeletal muscle. So there's gonna be some kind of conscious control that's skeletal that's going to happen at the, a little bit. Um, but then this lower one third is just smooth muscle. There's also smooth muscle up here. So some of that swallowing is going to be um, involuntary. This smooth muscle is going to contract and relax and allow our esophagus to move food, the bolus down it. This is called peristalsis and we will look um, we'll see this again, both in the intestine and in the esophagus. So peristalsis is movement in one direction, in this case, from the mouth to the stomach. And this happens via contraction of that's mostly smooth, but contraction of the muscle in coordinated patterns that allow for movement in one direction we will see another kind of movement in the small intestine that's not just in one direction. Typically, in the digestive system, typically we want to go one direction. Okay, so let's do a learning check while I erase this for you. What type of tissue lines the lumen of the esophagus? Do you know it? There's a picture in case that helps. Hopefully, if you didn't have it, it looks familiar now. This is our stratified squamous epithelium that is protective in terms of layers can come off, get burnt chemically or temperature, and they will just um, regenerate. This entire piece here with the lamina propria underneath here is our lamina propria, which is areolar tissue. What is that entire region called with these two tissue types? This is our mucosa. It's not respiratory mucosa because we're not in the respiratory system, but it's mucosa. That means we're gonna have a submucosa. Both the submucosa and the um, mucosa are gonna produce mucus that allow your food to pass easily. In this case, actually, it's more submucosa, more than in our pseudostratified. And then these last two layers here, these are muscular layers, or muscularis. You'll see there's different patterns here. If you were to cut throughout, you'd see different patternings of smooth and skeletal muscle. Um, we're just going to call it muscle. <laughs> 